Hello students, my name is John and I'm a beekeeper at Upper Cumberland Apiary. Check out what we got behind us today, some real live honeybees, out doing their thing, working, and taking care of the beehive. Miss Taylor told me you guys were talking about nature and all kinds of good stuff like that this week and that some of you may even want to become junior beekeepers. So I thought I'd put together a video for you, show you our apiary, show you some of our bees, and teach you a little more about the incredible honeybee. So you may have heard me use the word apiary, and you may be saying, I don't know what that means. What is an apiary? Well, to be honest with you, a lot of people don't know what an apiary is. Before I became a beekeeper, I didn't know what an apiary was. But basically, by definition, an apiary is just a place where bees are kept, where they're kept in hives, and just like you see here in this video, we have beehives kept in these boxes, in these beehive boxes, and this is our apiary. So an apiary is a place where honeybees are kept. So each and every day from sun up till sundown, the incredible honeybee is out foraging for the food and the natural substances they need to bring back to the hive so it can continue to survive and thrive. Similar to your mom and dad going to the grocery store to pick up groceries for you and your brothers and sisters, that's exactly what the honeybee does every day. Although they don't have a grocery store to go to, they've got nature. And they go out every day looking for four specific substances to bring back to the hive. One is nectar, the other is pollen, the third is water, and the fourth is propolis. Nectar is a, a sugary substance that they collect from flowers and trees, and it's the substance that they bring back to the hive that they ripen and cure and turn into honey. Pollen is a high protein substance that they, bring, they get off, also collect off of uh, plants and flowers and trees. You may see some bees coming into the hive right now, and they may have some uh, bright yellow uh, puffy uh, baskets on their back legs and that's actually pollen that they've collected from uh, the trees and flowers out in nature right now. It's a high protein substance that they actually turn into food also. They turn it into bee bread and they feed it back to the, the larva and the eggs in the hive. The third substance, water, which is just like uh, you and I need water, so do the bees and they get minerals and nutrients and hydration from that. And the fourth is propolis. That is a resin substance. If you've seen pine trees, how they get that really sticky sap, that's kind of like what propolis is. They collect resin from trees and plants, and it's really sticky, and they use it inside the hive to seal up cracks and to, to help uh, insulate the hive. It's also very uh, uh, antiseptic, kind of like uh, peroxide, and it's used to, to help keep fungus and mold from growing inside the hive as well. Now I know a lot of you are maybe a little bit afraid of a bee, and it is true, honeybees can sting you, and it does hurt. But in all my years of keeping bees, I can tell you that honeybees are extremely calm in nature. They are usually so focused on the work that they're doing that they don't really pay a whole lot of attention to me. Now, that doesn't mean they won't sting me every once in a while, and they do, but you know what? That's part of beekeeping. And it also reminds me that I need to be really careful when I'm working with them. Just like you or me, they don't like to be pushed around and, and be real rough with them. So we try to be really careful when we're keeping our honeybees. So 
so that we don't hurt any of them mm -hmm. and so that we don't get stung. Ouch! So now let's talk about the different types of honeybees that make up a honeybee colony. Now, when you were watching our video earlier, you saw all kinds of bees coming in and out and in and out of the beehive. So you might think, wow, there's all different kinds of bees inside that hive. But really, there's only three different types of honeybees inside a honeybee hive. You have the drone, who is the largest bee, not as long as the queen, but definitely bigger than the worker and the queen. The drone bee has big eyes, he has a big body, but here's a little fact for you, a little tip for you. Drone bees do not have a stinger, so they cannot sting you. Then you have the worker bee. The worker bee makes up 90% of the population in a honeybee hive. They are all female, and they do the heavy lifting for the whole colony. They collect nectar, they collect pollen, they collect water and propolis like we talked about earlier. They take care of the queen, they take care of the eggs and the larva. They are the workhorse of the beehive. Kind of like the engine in your car, the worker bee is the engine of a beehive. And then you have the queen. Obviously she is the biggest bee, the longest bee in the hive, and her job is to lay eggs. She can lay up to 1,500 to 2,000 eggs in a day in the peak time of the season. So her responsibility is to ensure that future generations of honeybees will emerge from their cells and become part of the honeybee colony. So inside a honeybee hive, you have all of these thousands upon thousands of wax cells. These are created by the worker bees inside the hive. Now I mentioned to you earlier that the queen bee is responsible for laying all of the eggs that will develop into the future generations of honeybees. So we have a picture here. This is actually a picture of a queen bee. Uh, what she does is she uh, will, will back her way into um, uh, her abdomen down into uh, one of the wax cells and she will deposit an egg into the bottom of one of these wax cells. So here we have a picture of a queen bee. She's depositing an egg into a wax cell. Now, this picture here shows that, whack, that uh, honeybee egg that's been deposited into the cell. Now, as soon as that happens, nurse bees, which you don't see nurse bees here, but there'll be nurse bees all over this, uh, this, uh, all these cells. They will start to feed this egg. Uh, they'll start to feed this egg a, a jelly substance that helps it to, to live and to grow. About three days later, this egg hatches into a larva. Now, the nurse bees will keep feeding and keep feeding, just like your mom and dad keep feeding you and, and, and make you breakfast and, and lunch and supper. Those nurse bees do the same thing. They, they keep feeding these larvae inside these cells, and they grow really fast. About nine days after this egg was deposited into this cell, it, is fully, uh, it has transformed into this um, larval state uh, before it, as it's developing into a honeybee. The nurse bees will then close this cell. They'll put wax over this cell so that this bee can continue the transformation process until it fully emerges as a developed, fully developed and functioning honeybee inside the honeybee hive. Now this is the cool part to me. From the day that this egg is deposited to the day that this worker bee emerges from this cell it only takes 21 days, that's only three weeks, for this little tiny egg to become a fully functioning honeybee inside the colony. Now to me, that's really cool. junior beekeepers I hope you've enjoyed our tour of the apiary today and I hope you've enjoyed our lesson on the incredible honeybee and hopefully one day you yourself will become a beekeeper I would certainly encourage that it's a really fun hobby 
and a really great partnership with an incredible insect. One of the questions I get asked all the time by people is how can we help honeybees or pollinators? And I always tell them the same thing. Go out with your family and plant something. So I would encourage you students this spring to talk to your parents, to your family, and go out together and plant some flowers and maybe a tree or maybe a bush in your yard and watch throughout the season as you attract honeybees and butterflies and all kinds of pollinators that will be attracted to that plant that you yourself have planted and they'll take care of it all throughout the season. It's a really rewarding thing to do to help the honeybee and all the pollinators in your area. So I hope you guys again have had a wonderful time uh, with our lesson and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Listen to your teacher, eat your vegetables, and take care of those honeybees. Y'all be good. Thank you.